This is Inside the Wolf's Den, an entrepreneurial journey with Sean and Joni Wolfswinkle. Welcome back to Inside the Wolf's Den with your hosts, Sean and Joni Wolfswinkle. Today we have another episode and we are going to be talking about hiring an A team and creating a thriving culture, which today can be extremely difficult, right? Yeah, I love the energy. I love the energy today. Wow. What did you have for lunch? Because you didn't share it with me. Hey, it's uh, one of those Mondays. Yeah, so wow. Um, hopefully you don't like bomb in the afternoon, just come crashing down. But no I uh, might be in bed by nine, yeah, but yeah. No, yeah, um, you know, we, we thought it would be important. I think, you know, all organizations today are struggling with hiring people. You know, I talk to colleagues, I talk to mastermind groups, you know, no matter where we go, uh, we were at, we were getting a dress shirt, I forgot what a dress shirt, so we had to go buy a dress shirt yeah. the other day and uh, ended up buying suits and stuff. The guy there was talking about how he's struggling, you know, the owner of that suit store to, uh, to get it, to find just quality, just well, people to show up. Exactly, yeah. and that's the thing too. It's extremely frustrating too because you'll have, you know, a couple interviews lined up and uh, they don't show up. Yeah. You know, and so you skip the whole phone interview because if they actually show up to the office, and that's a good sign, <laughs> that's right? A, that's, a, that's, <laughs> that's how you're rating people these days. No, <laughs> I mean it's been obviously because of COVID, all that's been going on, all the people that the, that stopped working, the people that don't want to come back into the office, the people that just want to work remote, you know, going forward, and that's all they're looking for is those type of jobs. I mean, there, there's a lot has changed, and it's difficult um, to find talent these days, and especially a talent. But, you know, we're trying to create an organization, and just like many of our listeners, you know, you're all uh, building and running successful organizations, or you might work in one, and you still need to hire within your own orga- organization. And so... How do you go about finding, you know, qualified um, candidates? How do you find a talent? Um, Let's be real. If they are solid, great candidates and people you want within your organization, they're probably working for somebody already. Yes. So So you have to have a job. You have to recruit them. Correct. Right. And so you have to be a good. I mean, you have to tell them about your company, your culture, like why people love working for you, right? And yeah. so I'll just tell you an experience that we just recently had with the, the last hire, um, you know, posted a video on social media and uh, the girl reaches out to me and says, hey, I really love what you're doing, your company, your culture that you're creating. And I think this is an organization that I wanna be a part of, Correct. right? Yeah. And so it started with that, but yeah, just being consistent with that as well. Yeah, I, this is something I think you have done really well over the last couple of years and, and within our marketing department and uh, working with them, but really sharing all that we do within our organization. And and I know, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm apprehensive against it because I don't, I don't like You're very it, but, private. You yeah, don't, don't like don't, people don't like to know your business. Correct. But. And, I, but, and I don't, it, but it does serve, if you have a good intention and it, and it does serve a good purpose because mm-hmm. people see... Otherwise, they wouldn't see it. So like on social and social accounts and, um, you know, YouTube and all this stuff, we're, we're constantly posting stuff about our team events mm-hmm. and our culture within our organization and uh, the the uh, like charity events and the, you know, how we've ser- served Camp Hope right. over those years. And we went and worked at Camp Hope and helped their organization and all those different things. People see that and people see like, wow, like this, is, I mean, they're having fun half of the time they're they're making an impact in society and making an impact on people um and and, their employees really do enjoy working for them right and that's and i say that all the time like the people that work for us really truly want to be here they want to learn more they want more in life like it's just it's more than just a job correct and so to right now when you can't find people you're going to have to start putting in the effort and energy to start making your self attractive, you know, to people mm-hmm. out there. So, and with the, even within your organization for people to refer, like say they work for us already and to refer one of their friends mm-hmm. or family or somebody else to come work for us. I mean, they, they got to believe in what you're doing and right. believe in what you're doing. So what we've done really well is, and uh, what you've done really well is really uh, attracted people by a lot of showing everything that we're doing within mm-hmm. the organization. And so um, kudos to you. And, and I think uh, it's made an impact because it, like our most couple of recent hires have all been either 
somebody was referred within our organization or somebody knew us and was following us and said, hey, you know what, now's the time to maybe make a change and, and uh, how about joining your your, your organization and, and your company? So Absolutely. Um, so make yourself attractive. Um, it's no data different than dating or anything like yeah. that. You know, you got you to gotta present yourself and somebody wants to be a part of you. And also with that, I think you also have – you have this group called the Noon Timers, where we, you know, offer real estate classes to our employees to yeah. learn more about real estate. And I think that's important as well. You know, we kind of show um, others out there like what our employee our employees have bought in properties and Correct. have rental portfolios themselves. You know, so we're helping them grow in their careers as well. Correct. Yeah, and I, I think that's huge in today's. Um, Climate and, and what we're doing is like, especially on the interviews, when you when you get uh, something we've done really well, and I, I try to really demonstrate if, I, if I'm conducting the interview, is really show them, yes, I'm trying to screen them and see, make sure they're the right person and the right person for organization, the right person for that position. But at the same time, I'm also selling myself. So mm-hmm. I'm also in our, my organization <clears throat> showing them like, what do we do within our organization that can benefit you on top of just your income right. and, and, and uh, benefits that we offer. So we really try to highlight those and show them if you're truly interested in learning about real estate, if you want to know how to manage and do investments, all that, you know, we're, we're going to show you how to do that. Mm-hmm. And you're, we're going to show you how you can get involved in real estate. And then we're going to take it one step further. If you take that step and say, hey, I want to start investing in real estate or I want to buy my first home, we're going to help you there and take those steps as well. And I don't know how many people we within our organization you've helped with purchasing, you know, and you've donated your commissions oh, yeah, to them all the time. Um, you know, to help them get in the homes, you we've we've bought uh, investment properties mm-hmm. with with different. Uh, That's another thing too is we'll partner with them. We'll yeah. you know they find the deal of obviously they probably don't have the money, so we back them financially, and yeah. you know we split the profits once we sell it. Correct. So it's a win win <laughs> for everybody. Yeah, and it's it's. Because that's what we needed when we got started, and we needed you know somebody to hold our hand. And so, why not be able to work for an organization um, that's also going to help you learn how to invest in mm-hmm. real estate and and hold your hand along the way while you're you're you have a job and you're making income and taking those next steps. Right. So it's kind of a win. And I know what some people are thinking. Oh well, you know, if they do that, then there's a chance that you know they're going to figure out all what they're <laughs> what we're doing and and go out on their own. Right. Yeah. yeah. There's a chance that they may do that, and we've had a few employees leave on good terms, but yeah. you know, that's, that's what it's all about. It's about yeah. growing, you yeah. know, and you're going to find somebody probably just as good and, and you just help somebody. Correct. And I mean, it's, it's, uh, I don't remember where the saying came from, but, uh, it's, uh, you know, either way, if you, if you, if you're either going to, uh, invest in those people uh, invest in their development, invest in, or, or don't do anything. Yeah. And then what's the result? So now you have, so you can either invest in them and they can grow as a person, grow in their career, grow with you. And yes, there's a potential they're going to leave you, but what's the alternative is that you just do nothing and they, and you don't, yeah. they don't advance and, and improve your company. I would rather take the alternative and let them keep improving my company. If they leave, great. And we've had great people mm-hmm. do that. And they've gone on, start their own companies. Yeah. And they're still and, today, they're like, thank you for, yeah. you know, giving me the confidence to, right. to be able to do that. Right. That alone feels good. Yeah. We had somebody that didn't even start his own company, but went in and, and, because of the encouragement and the books we read, we've read as an organization together and the constant positive feed, you know, uh, feedback and podcasts and everything we share with them, he was able to finally say, you know, what? I'm going to take that plunge. I'm going to take that step and go into a mm-hmm. totally different And he different was not career. even in this yeah. same career, right? And he would have never guessed it out of him. But, I mean, just something that he was truly passionate mm-hmm. about doing and, and it, he got the courage to take those right. steps. So, um, something else on this note as far as attracting, you know, um, something I wrote down was um, – something I think that we've done that, that really helped us was we hired a fractional uh, HR company. And so, you know, we're at that awkward size where we either need to hire an HR representative within our mm-hmm. organization or um, in our in this our case, we chose to do a fractional HR company where they, they give us so many hours per week. They do a lot of different odds and ends for us. If we ever need help with anything HR related, we just call them. They'll, they'll be there. We have a point of contact. But it, what's nice is that they don't, they, it's a company, so they have multiple HR representatives that specialize in different areas of HR. Mm-hmm. So some are just on, you know, hiring, some are on uh, 
complaint some are uh, growing and, compliance and balance, yeah compliance all that so there are different <clears throat> facets of what they do right. and so you get you get a um, you know a whole array of, of different uh, skill sets that you can use and, and utilize rather than just hiring one individual yeah. HR person that might only specialize in one thing and they probably do and okay. And sometimes but. they don't even specialize in that, right? <laughs> like you, you find yourselves in, in especially small businesses, mm-hmm. you know, you're probably not, you probably don't have the skill set to do that, but you just throw anybody in, in that position, mm-hmm. right? And there's so many moving parts. You have to make sure you're in compliance. You make sure that your job descriptions are uh, correct, all of that. And uh, at least on a fractional level, you can get every correct. single department. So what they've done really well within our own organization is um, on the attraction side is they have helped us write all our job descriptions. So they've wrote all our ads, they've wrote all our um, each job description we create. They help we give them the um, you know the main bullet points and all that, but then they mm-hmm. develop it. Um, so then when we're posting these ads, it's very descriptive, it's very informative, um, and it's also written with. In, in a way that entices uh, the candidate. Cause that's, mm-hmm. that's one thing is like, you know, it, it's similar to like, you know, I, I've never done online dating cause <laughs> we, we met at a very young age, but I'm sure you had to write a very, um, you know, like responsive <laughs> description, like you gotta like sell yourself and how exciting you're gonna be and all that, you know, <laughs> I, not, rather than like a dull post, right? And so, um, I don't have I'm any. laughing because I, <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see that. Just <laughs> yeah, what, what would mine say? That would be pretty hilarious. Yeah. Um, no, but all seriousness. Yeah, but no, yeah, it, it, you've got to write ads that are going to attract people to want to apply for your jobs. Yeah. And, and there's big difference if it's just very vanilla, very plain, you know, and we try to like, you know, entice like, hey, do you want to learn real estate? Do you want to? You know, and you got to get those key words mm-hmm. that are going to market to somebody right. and want them to apply. And then also they research to make sure that your what you're paying is in, in line with what the job entails. Right. Which is a big thing for us. Like when we started doing this, we were floored that we were, you know, our pay scale was off a little bit. So mm-hmm. they researched to make sure that we were on target, that you're going to attract the, the right candidates. Correct. And then, uh, you know, they've done a lot of other stuff with us as far as like, you know, uh, laying off different employees, they'll be there for us. They redid our um, employee handbook. There's so there's a lot of benefits that we mm-hmm. got, but um, definitely on attracting and enticing candidates to apply for our jobs, they've been really great on yeah. that. And then really structuring a nice employee um, job description on the front end, so the the employee really knows and, and the expectations are set up front rather than just winging it. So yeah. which we've done too. And and don't trust me, a lot of the, what we're sharing is stuff that. It wasn't on like that all these years. I mean, we made tons of mistakes. Sometimes we're just winging it, and oh shoot, we got somebody <laughs> coming up. But we need to write. What? How do you even write a job offer? You know, and just all that. But so we 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 actually started off hiring a um, headhunter to help us with a lot of that, and we failed miserably. Yeah. Right. Thanks. So so a key takeaway there is look for um, fractional HR companies in your yeah. area. I think it's great for a small business to a medium-sized business uh, to take advantage of. Yeah. So uh, and we'll, we'll take the next step now, Joni. So like now that we're attracting quality uh, A talent and getting them to apply, how do you? How do we within our company work the hiring and screening process? So let's get a little well, bit into that. Yeah, well, I mean, you have to have a process for that as well, right? Okay. Um, and with that, you need to have the correct software. So we use Career Plug, um, and so we manage the candidates through Career Plug. Mm-hmm. And, ads, you, uh, and it gets put onto I don't know how many different sites like ZipRecruiter, LinkedIn, all those major sites. It all gets posted onto there. But then every time they apply, it all comes into this centralized system which we can manage the the leads and the ads correct and you can have them take assessments as well which is the i mean if they're not going to take the assessment that's a red flag there that they're probably not good for your your so so you know something we do on the front end is that when when we get a person that applies for our our, uh, job and we get the resume and all that the first thing we do is we send them an assessment because in our opinion if they can't take one step, and, and, and I know sometimes the assessments and, and a lot of jobs do this, but and sometimes it's annoying, um, but if they can't take w- that one step, it's like, to me, it's like, mm-hmm. you know, they, they can't follow directions. And 
But I would also on the same time be very cautious because I've also seen the total opposite side where people have done very detailed, um, very it, like they want to screen out people extensively. So mm -hmm. they do a very hard screening or, um, or like a application process or a, a, um, a screening process. Yeah. yeah, assessment. To the point where it's so difficult that if you start seeing that you're not getting any responses <laughs> at all, that's a red flag that probably your um, assessment yeah. process is too difficult and, or too, too, right. too much. So, I mean, if you're not getting mm -hmm. any, yeah, for sure, you need to relook at your process. Make sure that your job descriptions read correctly. Make sure that the pay, <laughs> there's sometimes we, we had the wrong pay in there. We're <laughs> like, well, duh, yeah. that's the reason why we're not getting your response, I, right? So, a good example of this is I posted, a, a, I read, did an ad and refreshed it, an old one. Um, and we had just gone to where we're now allowing, um, it's a good note too. We went to a, um, what do you call it? One day a week remote work. Yeah. So um, to continue, especially as people are coming back into the office to incentivize or entice people to apply, you know, we're going to, we started with a one day and then we're, we're probably gonna advance to a two day uh, remote work so mm -hmm. they can work uh, from home one or two days a week. Um, and I, I clicked like remote work on the ad. And so all of a sudden I'm getting like just bombarded <laughs> by ads and they're all over the country. I'm like why was somebody in New York? And it's because they're all applying thinking it's remote work. And so they're, right. they're all over the but country. But now that you brought that up though, I mean, it's a key, um, a key point right there is that you may have to do some of that, right? Allowing mm -hmm. for remote work because that's, I mean, we're in that society today where, Yes, they That's want what that people are looking for. They're they looking for the flexibility. Correct. So like you said, start a process, define it and document it. And I think if you're new and maybe this is your first time hiring, I would document your entire process from start to finish. So now the next time you do this, you can hand it off to your next employee and right. they can they can help you with the hiring process. Mm -hmm. But document everything. Um, another takeaway or good point that we've really seen in today's market is candidates expect speed and quick responses like i'm talking like so instantaneous not, in, yes like within <laughs> the minutes. minute that they submit their application they, you should be reaching out to them correct and it, and i noticed that sounds just crazy. like a lead like yeah. if you're you know you're in sales right you never let that lead go so you yeah. pick up the phone and you answer that call right the same thing with your candidates yeah. that's how you need to look at it yeah it's no different um and so they expect a quick response even if it's just hey i, I got your resume i'm reviewing it or or maybe, hey, got your resume, here's an assessment, can you please take it? But like that speed and then setting up the next mm -hmm. step and the next step is very crucial in today's market. Yeah. And, they, and, and to be, guys, tomorrow they, somebody else will pick them up most likely. Correct, and they, they have <laughs> options. If they're truly looking and they are a talent and, and, and rock stars, I mean, they're gonna get picked up. In today's time, they're, they're gonna have numerous options for, so you gotta be on it as far as yeah, uh, you do. Uh, screening mm -hmm. and, and responding to them quickly. Um, and then, um, uh, just a book too, that I recommend that I brought with me. Um, if you're a reader, it's called top grading. Um, and it's a great book for setting up your processes and screening processes and, and hiring and, and promoting within your organization. So I definitely recommend checking that out. Uh, good takeaways from there as well. So, yes. um, but yeah, like we said, we, we use career plug. We weed out a lot of people based upon the personality tests and assessments. Um, and then from there, we schedule uh, phone interviews to start. And uh, usually we'll just basic questions, just getting to know them, making sure they're, um, you know, they, they align with them. our culture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, they're any questions they maybe have about the job that, so like I started doing all these phone screenings and they're like, and I'm like, well, so are you moving to Houston? No, why? And I'm like, well, cause, <laughs> and then it all came out that, you know, they, 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 yeah. So, that will obviously you work out some of those kinks that maybe your ad was didn't mm -hmm. have or pay and those things. So handling a lot of the questions um, to just get, but they're also getting comfortable with the candidate and making sure they're a good fit. Uh, they hold themselves well on the phone because you know property management. A lot of their their interaction is going to be on the phone. Right. And remember, you're looking for the skill set. You're not necessarily looking for somebody that has the experience as well. So I go, I train a lot of, of our franchises, and that's the thing is they always are looking for somebody with the experience, right? Mm -hmm. If they had the experience, most likely they would probably be working for somebody else. So we look for you got you want it and. You got 
you, you, get, you, you get, get it, it you, you want, want it, and you have the capacity, Correct. right? And so you're looking, and we use the predictive index when placing. And so we, we look for those qualities of an individual that we know that are going to be able to, you know, perform the job, um, and they're going to fit our company culture as well. Yeah. So the predictive index has been a huge, um, one of the huge assessments that we really use to making sure they're the right person for that particular seat. So a lot of the screening up front, phone and office interviews is making sure they're a good candidate for our organization. They're going to fit our culture. They're going to fit um, the environment and, and they're going to thrive in this culture and environment. But then the next is doing the predictive index to make sure they're going to be the right person for that seat. Which is that to me is the most important because we have done it where we've placed the wrong person in the wrong, right, wrong seat. I mean, they might be great, you know, an individual and they um fit your company your culture but if you put them in their wrong seat then you're just going to fail them i think right? we've done both sides i think yeah. we've also taken some people that are rock stars but they weren't they weren't a good culture fit for us mm -hmm. and they could have done great in but they didn't last because they didn't fit our culture mm -hmm. and it didn't and it didn't work out yeah. for them so try to make sure that, that it fits both um the, the right person on the bus i've always said and then they're the right person for that particular seat mm -hmm. but and to be honest, like we've always had much more success taking people that had really no industry experience in our industry. Mm -hmm. If you look at our operations managers, if you look at our leadership team, none of them came from, I guess one of them came from commercial real estate, but not, not right. residential. Uh, uh, we had some in the healthcare industry. I mean, it's from, yeah, all over. Right. Pest control. Mm -hmm. We had uh, uh, marketing in, 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 um, Precious metals, um, construction, I guess, kind of, or but yeah, I think it was insurance. You know, so it was all over the board. But it just shows that if they're if they get it, they want it, and they have the capacity, the rest you can teach. Uh -huh. The rest you, they can learn over time because they'll they're they're going to want to grow. They're going to want to learn, and they're going to be hungry to learn. And right. those are the ones that are going to thrive in, in in our culture. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and after they, you know, we, we do, you mentioned that we do the phone interview, but I really like bringing them into our office because it, it shows our company, it shows our culture and what we've created. I love for them to meet the team. And I also have the team, whoever they're going to be working with, you know, interview them as well. Gives yeah. a different perspective. Yeah. We usually have uh, at least two to three different people interview them. And number one, that we're just getting another uh, perspective mm -hmm. on them and, and maybe they'll ask different questions but we're also making sure that they're again the right person for our culture and and it's it, it'll be evident you know because all three will be unanimous yeah they're not going to work not going to fit well, or, or they're not it's gonna, amazing yeah. like some like you and i will go in the room right and they know that we're owners of the company yeah. of course they're not going to tell us anything you know they're going to yeah. act like everything is great yeah. right but then you know somebody else in our organization comes in and they just lay everything out like yeah. tell them their whole life story yeah. <laughs> that's weird how people do that but because it's going to get back to the same answer. But anyways, they, yeah. And also, I think it, it also, um, when, as with us and the owners, you know, they're not going to maybe ask some questions about the company, but we bring in other team members. They feel more... Uh, they feel comfortable. They feel comfortable it's... to ask questions about like, okay, well, you know, how is their management style or how how is it working here? And they'll get other perspectives on our organization. Mm -hmm. They'll ask questions about like our events and what we do. And, you know, so they'll get another perspective and they mm -hmm. feel like it, 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 they can feel comfortable asking those questions. So it always helps uh, as well for the candidate side to get a better perspective of, of our company. Right. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, we, it's, we always have multiple people interview sometimes uh, together, sometimes separate. Mm -hmm. Um, I like it usually separate just so they can, you know, have their time with individual. They don't have to feel like they're pressured or uncomfortable. <laughs> and some people like, oh, just make them feel uncomfortable as much as possible. <laughs> See if they crack under pressure. I think it depends on the, mm -hmm. the, the position, I think. You know, it depends on the role. Um, sometimes that's really nerve-wracking for somebody, but it depends on the role, how they can handle pressure. Right. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about onboarding, you know, because I think that – you really have to set the stage for success, right? Mm -hmm. And setting those expectations early on. Yeah. So how did we do that? And so one thing that we, we really did was we um, had a presentation, Mason. Actually, our fractional HR company created a presentation like, 
who we are as a company, who we are as owners, like, you know, what we're known for, our core values, uh, really, really detailed. Um, and that's what we present to them on day one. Right. Yeah. And so it's, it went into, cause also, our, you know, Joni and I have other brands and other, so depending on where they're hired into our company or organization, it also, it, you know, opens them up to the multiple different brands we have and, mm -hmm. and within our umbrella. And then what we're about, what we try to accomplish and uh, both in our community, but also internally as our, as our right. organization. And so I think it just gives a good perspective on, on us and who we are and, and what we're trying to accomplish. And I think, you know, from the first day, I think just sets up a good, good tone and mm -hmm. good start. Absolutely. Um, and then we also, I, I think it's always great to, we always um, give them like a, a partner, a buddy. Yeah. <laughs> buddy we, we give them a, a buddy, you know, at the start. So that way they, if they have questions, they have, a partner that they can come back to, somebody that can support them, right? right. They go and to lunch with them, um, a breaks with them, and kind of they meet frequently throughout the day. Just to, just to somebody that, you know, that, that is looking out for them, um, you know, th throughout their first week just to make them feel comfortable and make them feel invited. So, um, and then we also, for us, and, and this is like, we've gotten better at this. So remember I said, we, Training. we, we messed it all this up. We used to just hire somebody and be like, like yeah, yeah, here's your computer. Here's how you log in. Here's your email and good luck. Like, you know, go figure it out. Uh, That's why we have better people for uh, working yeah. for us because yeah. they, they don't do that. Well, you they actually you probably training. training them. You need training. There's that little question mark help, help uh, thing in the right hand corner. Go find a video on it. But, um, and we've had people do that. I, I remember, um, one person our, who does all our payroll, I hired her and like, I was like, okay, we, we need you to do payroll the next day. Have you done it before? <laughs> um, yeah, Cause we were, uh, we were in desperate times or else our We laugh at that, but I'm serious guy. Like train, if you can get the training right, then you're setting yourself up for success yeah. because. And um, that, that should be documented as well. And that should be all laid out. So prior to them arriving their first day, you have their two week training uh, outline. Planned out, outline, yeah. yep. Yeah. So, and who they're sitting in with, who they're shadowing with, correct. all of that should be laid out. And then uh, we've gotten better at this as well is, you know, we do the 30, 60, 90 day reviews and it just helps clear the expectations. It, it helps the employee know, gives them feedback on how they're doing. You get feedback on maybe where you could have improved your training program, where you could have, you can enhance it. Um, but and that's you, it right there. They're looking for feedback, correct. all of them, whether it's an in-house employee or whether it's a remote employee. We have, you know, 20 remote team members out of Mexico. Every single one of them is looking for feedback. Yeah. And, and I think you as an organization or the leader needs to also be wanting feedback you yeah. know, from them as well. And where could you improve? And open um, to taking that, correct. right? And that's another thing too is like, be an owner that says, oh, like, I don't agree with that. Well, be open to it because their opinion may matter, may change, you know, some things for the best. Yeah. And so if you get them through those 90 days and you kind of set them up for success, I think if you've hired the right candidates that are, uh, that get it, want it, and uh, have the capacity, you know, and, and for us within our organization, it's people that are, to me, like hard workers, they appreciate challenges. It's part of our core value. Um, they, they're willing to learn. They have grit, you know, and, you know, they're the type that just pull up their sleeves and no matter what mm -hmm. happens, they're going to make it happen. And so, and that's a good point yeah. you made there too, because we go over our core values a whole lot, right? Yeah. Like who we are, like, you know, what are we about in our organization? And I think it's important for you to know and understand what that candidate's core values are as well, to make sure that they're aligned with your company or culture. Yeah. That's, that's true. Yeah. Uh, how do you go about doing that? Asking them questions, you know, yeah. like, who are they? What, what are they known? What are they stand for? Like, yeah. what's their passions, right? Uh, yeah. Helping Some, people. It's helped us usually that first week, you know, you and I, some, we haven't always done it, but you know, we go take them out to lunch and get to know them. I, I find out a ton within, you know, an hour, hour and a half lunch about that person. Mm -hmm. I had no clue that you don't get in the interview. You know, people are, are more open. You find about their families and stuff. Other things that you, you what don't they're find. they're passionate about that you maybe Correct. wouldn't have known before. Um, and then from there, you know, we've talked about some of the stuff. You know, part of, part of this is also in, in every facet is your culture. And in your number one, you're trying to hire for the, the right person on your guys' bus. 
you're trying to attract the right people. And a lot of that's going to all come down to your company's culture. Yeah. And whether you, whether you uh, intentionally implement one or not, you're still going to have mm-hmm. a culture. And Good so, or bad. <laughs> so you might as well intentionally uh, create a, a, a culture. And so, like you mentioned, uh, it starts with the core values. So yeah. your core values should be written. Your team members should know them. You should have them posted. You should have them up, you know, and, and, and something you talk about frequently. I think Brett, at least every couple of weeks, is talking about our core values. No, values. we're Not talking about them every, every week. week so. <laughs> every Thursday, we're talking about our core values in our customer service workshop. And and even the new employees, you know, um, he will call on them and yeah. have them state what are the core values. And then, uh, you know, something that has really made an impact um and this all comes back from like EOS or sc- or scaling up um, is our is our meeting schedule because mm-hmm. I think it's part of our culture. It's part of what we do, uh, where we have daily huddles every morning and we talk about what's working, what's not. We share good news. We talk about stocks as an organization right. together. Um, but it just starts the day off right. Yeah, and, and if you're if you're managing remote employees, this is huge. I mean, this is something that you have to implement. Yeah. Or if you're managing, you know, several different locations, right? Because again, it's all about getting on that same page. And your first, I, I call it the first, the most important fifteen minutes of your day. Like if you do nothing at all, that right there is the most yeah. important. And. and and this is something we've learned, again, from mistakes. Is we've struggled with, with offices and other locations uh, to keep the culture unified throughout the whole organization. It's tough. If, if they're not in the in your main office daily, it's hard to implement that. Right. you got to find the right, number one, the right people. But then secondly is having these touch points where the culture spread throughout everything. So like the daily huddles, um, we do every Wednesday like a KPI weekly review, and so um, each facet of the organization is is has to post their KPIs, and we go over it, and we it's it's green, yellow, red, so we know who's performing, who's doing okay, and who's not, mm-hmm. and, and maybe it's just a coaching, maybe it's a something an issue, but at least you know where everybody's yeah. at and and people. And I think going back to when you're hiring too, I think that this. Uh, giving the candidate like what their objectives, what what their goals are, right? Mm-hmm. So that way when you're doing these KPIs, they're not surprised. Oh, I didn't know that I was responsible for leasing this yeah. many houses. If I would have known that, you know. Yeah. So it starts with when you onboard them and, you know, know what their objectives are okay. and, and go through their goals with them. That's a good point. Um, and then we do on Thursdays, which you just mentioned, our customer service workshop, which we talk about everything. We start off with core values and we start off, we talk about everything related to customer service because that's that, that's the all our businesses focus and, around customer service and it's ongoing training for yeah. everybody you know like and what i love about our workshops is that uh brett leads them and he'll call on somebody every week to do it right mm-hmm. and so it just really helps improve them as leaders as well because yeah. they're presenting they're getting out of their comfort zone doing something that they probably wouldn't have done otherwise right um, and some days we just, you know, we, we go through a call together and how can we improve our customer service on this call? Yeah. And people are just hearing it. it. It makes such a huge impact. Um, hearing that call and what they did well, where they could have improved. Mm-hmm. Or, um, that's tough sometimes to hear, you know, cause we were all reevaluating ourselves and sometimes it makes people uncomfortable, but it also at the same time helps people grow. And yeah, so, absolutely. And, um, and that's what we really tr- strive for within our organization is to, to grow through putting ourselves in uncomfortable situations. So uh, I don't know, an old, I don't know a lot of organizations that, you know, um, promotes growth and yeah. promotes, you know, self-development, which we do a lot of that. And I think it's important in an organization. It's part of our core values. Mm-hmm. So if you're not about, if you're not about self-improvement, you're probably not a good fit for our organization. So we're willing to get uncomfortable and, and challenge yourself. So, uh, and that, th- that doesn't mean that that's right or wrong. It just means that's us. That's us. And so you got to develop that yourself. Right. So, um, and then you mentioned some of this stuff. Some of the other, I think, things that really help our culture is, um, like we mentioned, growing together. But we do that by like a book club. So mm-hmm. we're always constantly reading a Once book Once a together. quarter, we'll read a book together. Um, you mentioned the noon timers, which would go over real estate investing. And I share about 
<laughs> all my mistakes and then uh, and what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. It's usually evaluating mm -hmm. the deals that, that I'm currently involved in, but also um, we also go over some of the ones that we're doing with our with our team members and the ones we bought with them and what's going on with there and any new strategies, anything we I you know we, we talked about investing outside of real estate for a while because mm -hmm. uh, at, at that time we were reading a book about investing in the stock market, your 401k, all that stuff. So we were going over strategies there, uh, IRAs, uh, self-directed IRAs. So we'll go into other different things as a, and it's once a month I meet for an hour and we, it's usually during lunch. Um, and then, uh, what else? Yeah. Also finding ways to motivate your team, you yeah. know? And so we do a lot of, contests we you know we're in different pods so different pods will have contests against each other which i think is it's healthy yeah right for your organization yeah and again that's part of our culture mm -hmm. is we like a, a competitive culture and and because uh, that's how we are wired you and i but uh and it's fun so when whether it's bowling or whether it's throwing axes or or competing on on reviews uh online reviews or competing uh, on scores, you know, on our KPI reports, mm -hmm. it's always some little friendly competition and, right. and, and we reward them that way. And so. the last thing I'll mention is lunch and learns, which I think are <laughs> extremely important, especially if you have different departments that maybe don't work together all the time. Like, yeah. you know, do a lunch and learn on a leasing or renewals, whatever it is, but it really allows the other departments to know what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. That's a good point. Yeah. And they, they, I think so many other people outside didn't realize oh i didn't know that's why you did what you exactly. did exactly why is it so important yeah <laughs> sometimes why it, you're pushing me to do this <laughs> yeah so i think it helps uh break down those silos within mm -hmm. within your organization and within the different departments so i hope that was beneficial um we went over a lot there on uh hiring uh an a team and and uh create a thriving culture and so um you know if you have any questions um you know, we'd be happy to answer those. We've made a lot of mistakes and just learn from them. And so hopefully learn from our mistakes. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, but just get started. I think taking that first step about hiring your first employee, that's always the hardest one uh, for us. It was our old babysitter. Um, so that's where we found our mm -hmm. first hire. And so uh, it can be as simple as that. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be just somebody we knew uh, that was looking to get out of babysitting and into uh, the office environment. And, and so it worked out for us. Yeah, it did. And that, that brings me to the final point is always try to be recruiting, right? Yes, that's true. Wherever you go, where it's to dinner with your husband, wife, your children, like always be looking for that next rock star okay. tell, because tell, you tell never people. know where that's going to lead you. I can tell you there's <laughs> several stories, but <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we found several, you know, rock stars just randomly. Yeah. So because you just, you, you, you're talking to people, you hear that they're looking and, and you just plant a, plant a seed mm -hmm. and, and the harvest will come. So uh, we've just planted a lot of seeds and, and we've had some really great results from it. So get out of your comfort zone. All right. Well, that is it for today. On, and we'll wrap that up. So again, uh, please share this if you know anybody that's looking to hire and uh, maybe could use some uh, some tips and tricks. Otherwise, we'll see you all next week. Have a great week. See you, everyone. You've been listening to Inside the Wolf's Den, an entrepreneurial journey with Sean and Joni Wolfswinkle. Tons of entrepreneurial podcasts are out there. Talking. Talk, talk, talking. But Joni and Sean are living it every single day. Their portfolio now includes many franchises and medium sized businesses. We talk about the trials and motivators of successfully running a business. Join us again soon for another podcast. But until then, reach out on the website at insidethewolfsden.com, on Facebook at Inside the Wolf's Den on Instagram at Inside the Wolf Den. We'll see you again soon. This is Inside the Wolf's Den. We'll see you next time.